Right now, athletes swim, run, and bike through Madison today for the Ironman Wisconsin race. We talk to a spectator and see how he helps fire up athletes. Also, what road closures to know about as the race continues into the evening. Plus, two community members honor at a Red Cross event. That's all coming up at 5.30. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I am Jalen Banks. Now, there are 12 Ironman triathlons in North America, and we host one of them right here in Madison. Our Merrill Hubbard went on on the bike trail portion of the event to see how supporters help the athletes on their uphill battle. It is full Ironman race day, and that means that all of these athletes are biking 112 miles. And in order for them to do that, they're actually going to have to go up this huge Midtown Hill. On Madison's west side, this hill stands in front of cyclists as they hit around the 50-mile mark. On the second loop, it will also be close to their 90th mile. To get up this hill not once, but twice, takes strength and determination. Sometimes it also requires an extra boost of encouragement. Keep it moving, guys. Keep on moving. Uh, so everybody's out here supporting them, that one person that they really want to support or the group of people. But every single person out here is running up with somebody or cheering them on or saying some cheesy line to make them laugh. Uh, so everybody's just here to boost the morale and just keep them all happy. The full Ironman is a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then a marathon to top it all off. People will be running to the finish line till just past 12 a.m. tonight at the Capitol. Reporting in Madison, Merrill Hubbard, News 3 Now. Merrill, thank you. Coming up tonight at 10, we'll learn more about why supporters that they love, they keep cheering on these athletes and the lasting impact encouragement can have on people. And of the more than 3,400 athletes in the race, one is defying the odds, that being Misty Johnson from Washington. Johnson was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2016. Despite that, she's done three Ironman races so far, but this year is different. She ran the half Ironman yesterday and is racing the full today for a total of 210 miles across two days. And her husband is accompanying her as her guide. And of course, we here at New Street House send all the luck to those racing this evening. And the race runs until midnight tonight. This map that you see right here is given out by the city of Madison and shows in black the streets which will be closed until that time. All traffic going west from the Ohara River should take the red routes. Those going east from the UW campus and Camp Brandle should take the blue routes. And an awfully beautiful day if you're out there racing for the Ironman. Let's go look at your first one forecast with meteorologist Blaze Keller, who's out on the weather patio. Blaze, how does it feel out there? Not too bad. You know, we got a little bit of a breeze, but if you look into uh, the sky, you'll notice that uh, there's just a few little clouds and just a bit of haze. We have a pocket of smoke over parts of southern Wisconsin. We're going to get a break from that as we go into your Monday evening, but then more smoke is expected to return as we head into your Tuesday. 73 degrees as we take a live look there to Towards downtown Madison. The humidity is low. Our dew points remaining low as well. That's the reason why I feel so comfortable outside. We started off the weekend with some of us dipping below freezing, and now we are ending the weekend on a much different note, climbing into those 70s. And overnight tonight, not going to be as cold as where we once were. Uh, we're only going to dip into those 50s. But 70s across southern Wisconsin and here across Dane County, 76 in Edgerton, 74 in Sauk City in Wanakee. We're looking at low to mid 50s tonight underneath those clear to mostly clear conditions. We will keep that haze around as we head overnight as well. But what we are tracking is this what will be eventually a tropical cyclone and possibly our next hurricane as we head into the middle of next week. Its path takes the remnants into the lower portion of the Ohio River Valley. Could that be our next rain chance? We're going to track out that along with maybe the prolonged uh, warmer temperature trend in the full forecast. All right, sounds good, Blaze. We'll see you then. Earlier today, a tactical situation in Beaver Dam led to the closure of Madison Street all the way to Chatham Street and to Curie Street. However, as of 2 this afternoon, the Beaver Dam Police Department says Madison Street is now open once again. Further details about this incident will be made available later today from Beaver Dam PD. The Vernon County Sheriff's Office reports a single vehicle crash in Elroy that killed one teenager and left another in critical condition.
A 17 year old male was driving a pickup truck northwest of Highway 33 when he lost control. The vehicle left the road and hit an embankment, rolling over several times. The sheriff's office says seatbelts do not appear to have been in use. And a 16 year old passenger was ejected from the vehicle during the crash and was pronounced dead around 1 a.m. earlier this morning. The 17 year old driver was severely injured and was flown to UW Hospital by UW Med Flight. Still to come on News 3 Now at 530, a manhunt is underway as police search for a gunman in a rural area of southeastern Kentucky. And tonight on News 3 Now at 10, Consumer Reports offers expert advice on gearing up and keeping your family protected during a natural disaster. We know Wisconsin workers can get the job done. But China has been taking our jobs. For years, our government built America's infrastructure with Chinese iron and steel. I said that's got to change. Tammy Baldwin wrote the law to make sure American projects are made with American iron and steel. Now we're getting more work in Wisconsin. With Wisconsin workers. Tammy Baldwin stood up to China and our government. She got the job done. I'm Tammy Baldwin. I approve this message. A lot of law firms claim to be experts at handling injury cases that involve large trucks. But handling one trucking case does not make you an expert on the subject. Experience matters in these cases. One local firm has handled 25 trucking cases which resulted in payments over $1 million each, and hundreds of others as well. Because Wisconsinites know who to call when it's a must-win scenario. They call Habish, Habish & Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. You work hard enough. Take a load off this Labor Day with new appliances from Brothers Maine. Celebrate the holiday with unbeatable deals on top brands like GE Appliances, Cafe, Hot Point, and higher. Don't miss out. Shop the Labor Day sale at Brothers Maine today. Building up the middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency. She'll do it with new ideas to make middle class life more affordable. New caps on the price of medicine. New investments in clean energy to bring down costs for families. And while Trump will cut taxes for the super rich, she'll cut taxes for the rest of us. A stronger middle class. A future we can afford. LCB Victory Fund and FF PAC are responsible for the content of this ad. There's a lot to love about life in the 608. Fundraisers, farmers markets, family events. Tell Josh what inspires you, and it might be featured on News 3 Now This Morning in the 608, weekdays only on News 3 Now This Morning. You're watching News 3 Now at 530, moving forward. Thank you for staying with us. Community members were honored by the Red Cross today for saving a man who had a medical emergency. Karen Stable and Jessica Schmidt received the Certificate of Extraordinary Personal Action, which is given to those who step in and step up during emergencies. The Red Cross says Stable and Schmidt exemplify the mission of the organization to help those in suffering during an emergency. Tonight at 10, hear from the two people honored today and the man whose life they saved. In the race for the White House, both Vice President Harris and former President Trump campaigned in battleground states this weekend. They're preparing to face off in person for the first time this week in their presidential debate. Trump was in Wisconsin yesterday for an outdoor rally in Mosney. Vice President Kamala Harris stopped by Pittsburgh in a local shop after picking up an endorsement from former Vice President Dick Cheney and his daughter, former Congresswoman Liz Cheney. I'm honored to have their support, and I think it's an important statement right now. A lot of what I think is happening, and I was just talking with some folks here in Pittsburgh about it, is that people are exhausted about the division and, and the attempts to kind of divide us as Americans. Harris has been prepping in Pennsylvania for Tuesday's presidential debate. The first and perhaps only time the candidates will debate, and in fact the first time they will meet face-to-face -face ever. And Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Walls will be back in Wisconsin this week. After Tuesday's debate, the Democratic ticket will embark on a tour of key battleground states. That includes a stop in the dairy state for the Minnesota governor. Walls was previously in Wisconsin on Labor Day. A manhunt is ongoing for a suspect who authorities say shot into nine cars on an interstate south of Lexington, Kentucky. Yesterday, five people were seriously injured and a major interstate was closed for hours. Residents in the rural community of London, Kentucky are urged to stay indoors as police search for the suspect. Rob Kirkpatrick 
has more. Police in Kentucky are searching for a suspect. They say shot into nine cars on Interstate 75 south of Lexington on Saturday. Five people were seriously injured, but the Laurel County Sheriff's Department said all victims are in stable condition. All of a sudden, we just heard this deafening loud sound, and it sounded like, like a rock went through my back window, and our ears were ringing, and we just looked at each other, and we were like, was that a gunshot? The shooting occurred Saturday afternoon near London, Kentucky, a rural town south of Lexington. I-75 was shut down for hours, and a manhunt is underway for the suspected shooter. Police say this man, 32-year-old Joseph A. Couch, is the main suspect and urged the community to remain vigilant. We're asking people to, if you think you hear something outside of your home, please do not go outside shooting. Uh, our officers could be in that area. The search coordinated by the sheriff's office resumed Sunday morning with the help of multiple law enforcement agencies, including a drone with infrared heat sensing technology. Officials say they know the general area of Couch's location, but the terrain is rugged with lots of trees. It's a large area. We're just going to have to start from, from where we have uh, anticipated that he possibly was. And we are looking for uh, uh, spent rounds. It's unclear what the motive is for the shooting, and authorities say Couch is considered armed and dangerous. I'm Rob Kirkpatrick reporting. And coming up next on News 3 Now at 5.30, a final check of your first one forecast is coming up when we return. Inflation is affecting everyone's bottom line this election year. We haven't been making profit. We're just keeping the lights on. I'm exposing the tough realities local small business owners are facing and what candidates can do to capture their votes. Free for the People, Tuesday at 10. Women need to pay close attention to what Eric Hubdi says about access to abortion. Hubdi's all in about opposing reproductive rights. I am totally opposed to abortion. And he wanted Roe overturned. Do you think Roe versus Wade should be overturned? Yes. So Eric Hubdi is okay with politicians overruling decisions of doctors like me. My patients worry about what Hubdi will take away next. A vote for Eric Hubdi means we'll lose even more control over our lives. Women Vote is responsible for the content of this ad. Okay, guys, we're all here because U.S. Cellular has an incredible deal. Right now, you can get four lines for just $90. Sorry, just double-checking. Is it really that good of a deal? Yeah. It's a huge deal. You also get four free phones of your choice. Four free phones! Wow, I just triple-checked, and that's awesome. So go get that deal. Or at least help me clip. Do you check expiration dates? Oh, I can do that. Great. Get four free phones of your choice with no trade-in needed, plus four lines for $90. We would never hit 12 drunk. Clutch it up drunk? Not a chance. Do a stoppy drunk? We would never drift drunk. Never drive drunk. Drive sober or get pulled over. I was a Kamala Harris supporter. That changed after an illegal alien murdered my son. Running him over, then driving back and forth over Drew's body three times. The man who killed my son had been arrested previously, but Kamala Harris let him go. As San Francisco's DA, Kamala was soft on crime. As a senator, she supported releasing criminal aliens back into our neighborhoods. Kamala Harris is dangerous. Preserve America PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Let's get a look at your first one forecast with meteorologist Blaze Keller. Blaze. And we are continuing to track generally quiet conditions across southern Wisconsin and a lot of the Great Lakes for that matter through a lot of next week. Temperatures are going to start to climb back into the 80s starting tomorrow. We're going to keep the hazy conditions at least for now. Thursday looks to be the hottest day over the next 10, but we are not saying goodbye to the above average temperature trend. We're expecting this trend to continue for at least the next maybe two weeks weeks if uh, if not beyond that we'll take a look at that in just a moment but quickly a look at your Monday forecast as we're maybe beginning to plan our next work week 
plenty of sunshine. We're going to keep the hazy conditions, but we're back into those upper 70s to low 80s. Southerly winds have taken over. What we're also going to continue to uh, sit underneath is the hazy conditions as well. The good news is a lot more of that thicker smoke while it's higher up in the atmosphere will be clearing out as we go further into your Monday. We get a break from the smoke as we go into your Monday night, starting out Tuesday, less hazy, but then just off to our west, that smoke is expected to reach fill in as we head into your Tuesday night and then further into Wednesday. The good news is because this is higher up in the atmosphere, our air quality isn't terribly impacted by it. It's just causing the haze uh, against our blue skies. But if this were to change, we'll keep you updated. So we'll most likely continue the good to maybe moderate air quality as we go into your Monday and then further into Tuesday. But as I mentioned at the top of our newscast, we're tracking what will eventually become possibly uh, our a, a category one hurricane as it makes its way out of the Yucatan Peninsula north into the Gulf of Mexico. Latest models continue to take this uh, tropical system along the Mississippi River and then have it fall apart around St. Louis. And because of that, we may not see as much weekend rain as we had previously thought. The path does continue to look very uh, uh, stable uh, between each model run. It, can, it continues to be consistent. So our confidence level in the path is fairly high. The weekend rain chance and those cooler temperatures with the increased cloud cover that would otherwise come with the weekend rain is low as well because if this system falls apart, this next hurricane falls apart to our south, we're not really going to capitalize on not only the rain, but we're not going to keep the cloud cover uh, around for as long either. Now, as I mentioned, we are also not saying goodbye to the uh, warmer than average temperature trend. We continue to sit underneath an 80 to 90% chance of warmer than average temperatures through at least September 22nd. And we could also tap back into some excessive heat throughout that same time frame. We have a low threat for some excessive heat as we look from the 16th through about the 22nd. So we are not quite done with summer yet, despite the fact that we started out this weekend, some of us below freezing, and then we only got into the 60s on Saturday. But as we're planning out your Monday, as the kids are heading off to school, we're back into those low 80s, starting on the upper 50s to low 60s as they're heading off to school and then coming home, ending the day uh, around 80 degrees, steadily cooling into those upper 70s by later in the afternoon. There is a look at your seven and your 10 day forecast. Other than that weekend rain chance, which again is just conditional about uh, as to whether or not this tropical system does make it as far north. We are staying mainly dry in 80s from Monday all the way through uh, that following Wednesday. It looks like summer's trying to hang on for just a few more days no, before not, we head into the fall. Go. Yeah, yeah I, think I know. We're probably going to stay warm at least through the start of October. We'll so, have to see. So the Badgers they kick off against Alabama at 11 a.m. next Saturday. Hopefully, yeah. you know when the boy, when those guys from the South come up north, they can mm -hmm. stay a little bit chilly just for that 11 a.m. kickoff. We'll, Fingers we'll, crossed. We'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. Well, sounds good. Thank you, Blaze. <laughs> A new book featuring in-depth interviews with former Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers has been released ahead of his much-anticipated 2024 season debut. CBS's James Brown spoke with the author to discuss the new book that examines Rodgers' career and personal life. The name of the book is Out of the Darkness, The Mystery of Aaron Rodgers by one Ian O'Connor. What was of interest to you? He was mysterious, he was intriguing, and there was a distance about him. And those are usually the subjects that I'm drawn to. He wanted to change the narrative arc of his career, going from the smallest market to the biggest market in the league. People said, well, why the Jets? They haven't been to the Super Bowl since January of 1969, but it's a great opportunity for him. Winning a championship in New York, if he can pull it off, and it's going to be a very difficult task, would dramatically enhance his historical standing in the sport. And I think that would be the biggest New York sports story of my lifetime. Did he give you the okay to do this book? It's unauthorized. And I interviewed 250 people and actually handed in the manuscript without him. And all of a sudden, a couple of weeks after I handed in my book, I got a message from the Jets that Aaron is now willing to see you. And we sat in his backyard. We talked about some sensitive issues. He's estranged from his family for now 10 years. He had some interesting things to say about his controversial COVID stance and made a concession and admission of fault that surprised me. Take us through that. What were his thoughts after the fact? I did say to him, why didn't you tell the truth that day? You were asked if you were vaccinated. And he effectively said, yeah, I should have done that.
He feels like he gave critics the one thing they really still have on him today. That was such a major public relations hit for him to absorb, and I don't think, JB, he's recovered from that. He went from being considered one of the good guys in the NFL, a guy who supported Colin Kaepernick. There was a case where a fan yelled out an anti-Muslim slur during the national anthem after the terrorist attacks in Paris, and he rebuked the fan publicly and President Obama sent him a letter thanking him for doing that. So Aaron used to get praised for being on the right side of social issues, and then all of a sudden he became a bad guy. But I, I do think that good guy is still there, and so I think this book, by talking to his friends and associates who have witnessed his acts of kindness and generosity behind the scenes that he doesn't publicize, I think gives a balanced portrait of who he is as an athlete and, and as a man. He is arrogant at times, and most of the greats I've covered have that competitive arrogance, and maybe you need it to be an all-time great. He deserves a lot of credit as a self-made superstar. Nobody ever handed him anything, and he made it happen through the singular force of his will, his work ethic, and his talent, and that should be a big part of his legacy as well. Coming up next on News 3 Now at 530, Alabama is coming to town. How the Badgers are prepping for the powerhouse opponent next in sports. I will make it a top priority to bring down costs for all Americans. Her plan? She'll take on big oil and drug companies who rip us off, penalize big corporations who price gouge us on food and gas, and make billionaires pay their fair share. Donald Trump fights for billionaires and large corporations. I will fight to give money back to working and middle class Americans. LCD Victory Fund and FFPAC are responsible for the content of this ad. We're cranking up the voltage, Wisconsin. Lottery retailers all around the state are lighting up with the latest limited time offer. It's Badger 5, 5 will get you 6. During the month of September, players who buy a $5 or greater Badger 5 ticket will receive a bonus ticket for the next drawing of Badger 5. This electric offer is only available for a limited time and only at Wisconsin Lottery Retailers. Kamala Harris cast the tie-breaking vote that created America's inflation. The vice president votes in the affirmative, and the bill is passed. Economists said Harris's vote led directly to the higher prices we pay. 22% more for groceries, 50% more for gas. Mortgage costs nearly double. Thanks a lot, Kamala. Trump had our economy humming. He'll do it again. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. I'm a two-time Trump voter. In 2024, I cannot support Donald Trump. Trump is 100% responsible for January 6th. His treatment of women is just disgusting. Trump called servicemen Trump suckers Trump and losers. If Trump has a second term, it will be much worse than the first. Kamala Harris is a prosecutor. He's a convicted felon. In 2024, I will be I will be I will be proudly voting for Kamala Harris. Republican Accountability PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Need help with a consumer issue? Contact News 3 Now's Call for Action. For the first time since the shortened 2020 season, Wisconsin football is 2-0 to start the year. But now the real test starts. The fourth-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide, they come to Camp Randall on Saturday for probably the most highly anticipated Badger football game in recent memory. Alabama's resume speaks for itself, the sport's most dominant program by far over the last couple decades. But for the Badgers, these are the games that they live for and the ones that will show them what they're really made of. Up team in college football in the last 20 years. I mean, um, you guys knew it. I, yeah, it was daunting. It's been hanging over top of, you know, your head from the time you walked in the door here. Um, but it's also to say, hey, you got to find a way to, to 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 continue to measure yourself, right? It's going to be a test. It's going to be a, a great team coming in here. But you know, that's why you play this game, and that's why you know we, the guys on this team came to Wisconsin was to to play teams like this and and to play in these big games. So, the boys will be ready. Jordan Love's MCL sprain, which was graded a half grade, not even a full MCL sprain, will keep him out for likely at least the next month. That means the Packers, they have some decisions to make. They already have Malik Willis on their roster, the quarterback they traded for before the season. And of course, the recent draftees, Sean Clifford and Michael Pratt on the practice squad. But reports today say that the Packers reached out 
to former Titans and Dolphins quarterback Ryan Tannehill. That will be something to watch for. Love suffered the MCL injury in the final seconds of the season opening loss, leaving the Packers with more questions than answers against a admittedly generous September schedule playing the Colts, Titans, and the Vikings. And of course, today is one of the most exciting days in the entire calendar year, the first NFL Sunday. Let's head to Atlanta where the Falcons hosted the Steelers. And you know that Steelers defense is chock full of Badgers led by T.J. Watt. The three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year gobbles up the fumble, setting up one of six Steelers field goals on the day. And then later, 10 seconds left in the game, Steelers up eight and T.J. Watt calls game and gives it a bow. Sacks Kirk Cousins and wins it for the Steel City. 18 to 10 is the final. Out to the Big Apple where the Vikings played the Giants. Andrew Van Ginkle got paid this offseason to leave Miami for Minnesota. And the former Badger makes an impact. It was a big day for Badgers across the NFL. And that is some kind of pick six. Vikings win it convincingly 28 to 6, the final score. The Brewers have one of the best records in all of baseball, but you wouldn't know it if you just started watching in September. They've only won two of their six games this month. And in the fifth, Colorado's Sam Hilliard hits a three-run homer. The Rockies, one of the worst teams in baseball, take the game and the series. Brewers lose 4-1 to one and get a much-needed off day tomorrow. We'll be right back. I'm not old enough to vote yet. But I learned how one out of six of us will someday be raped. So please, think about me when you vote. I learned how our freedom to have an abortion was taken away. Even in cases of rape or incest. Even to travel to get an abortion. You know who got rid of Roe v. Wade. When you vote, please think about me. Because the politician who got rid of Roe v. Wade, he couldn't care less. You work hard enough. Take a load off this Labor Day with new appliances from Brothers Main. Celebrate the holiday with unbeatable deals on top brands like GE Appliances, Cafe, Hotpoint, and higher. Don't miss out. Shop the Labor Day sale at Brothers Main today. Donald Trump's back, and he's out for control. I would have every right to go after them. Complete control. I will wield that power very aggressively. And he has a plan to get it. Detailed plans for exactly what our movement will do. It's called Project 2025, a 922-page blueprint to make Donald Trump the most powerful president ever, overhauling the Department of Justice, giving Trump the unchecked power to seek vengeance, eliminating the Department of Education, and defunding K-12 through schools, requiring the government to monitor women's pregnancies and severe cuts to Medicare and Social Security. Donald Trump may try to deny it, but those are Donald Trump's plans. Well, revenge does take time, I will say that. And sometimes revenge can be justified. He'll take control, we'll pay the price. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. Help us pack the truck to kick off Coats for Kids. Monday, News 3 Now is collecting kid-sized winter coats at Clinky Cleaners on Monona Drive. Stop by with your donation to keep kids warm this winter. Pack the truck with Coats for Kids. All right, so Andrew, do you want them to sign Ryan, yes or no? I think it would be a good move. Yeah, yeah, I do think it'd be a good move. Settle things up, secure things up for the next month, and allow Jordan Love to have a position when he comes back mm -hmm. to have a chance to make the playoffs. For sure. All right, another... And thank you for asking. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I'm, 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 you uh -huh. know, you're like our experts, so there's really... Yeah. Nothing. All right, a quick check of the forecast. Of sunshine tomorrow, we're back into the 80s, and we stay in the 80s all these next days. All right, sounds good. We'll see you back here at 10 o'clock.